the person that we think has the matchup. And we are getting into this first hash, low block area, sometimes as far as right across the middle of the lane. And we're going with our high post catch and a high low feed to our isolated post. There's just no backside help there. The only way to bring help would be to bring the help off the high post. The high post defender would be come down, could come down or you have to run from quite a distance to try to bring that backside help. So it's a nice isolation. In clip number one of this set, pay particular attention to the high post cutter. Notice that he does not cut until all the action is clear on the ball side, opening up the high post and making the high low post pass rather easy. In clip number two, it's important to note that our wing passer makes a strong ball fake back to the top before passing the ball into our high post. We get a nice high low pass and finish. In clip number three, we're highlighting our ball fake again. And this time we're gonna ball fake to the corner. Make a nice pass on time to our high post flash. A good high low pass and strong move. Clip number four showcases two ball fakes. Our wing player will make a strong fake to the baseline. A nice fake back to the top. Enter the ball in the high post. Get a high low post pass and finish on the inside. Clip number five showcases this set against the matchup zone. Watch how the top defender on the weak side of the zone has to drop down in the post area, giving us a major matchup advantage in the post. Next, we're dealing with sagging or double teaming out of our high post area. Again, we can down screen to get into it. If they sag, just go straight wing entry. Point guard through, deep in the corner, safety, fire, the higher the better. I'm gonna go ahead and get time it, wait, make sure the smoke clears on the ball side. Get your leverage. Make your pass into the high post on the outside shoulder with some pace on it, no drifters in the high post. Step your isolated post person into the post position. And now what we're getting is we're getting sagging defense off of the high post or we're getting very quick double teaming in from the high post into our low post area. So we get the high post catch, we throw the high low post pass, and there is a very quick drop off with the post defense. So we just simply return, high post just steps in, we get a return pass from the low post for the short jump shot in the high post. Clip number six demonstrates excellent timing, strong ball fake, a high low post entry, and kick back to the high post player for a jump shot. Again, we're dealing with sagging defense out of our high post area. Point entering to the wing, getting through to the corner. Safety fire as high as possible. Get on the inside foot. Nice leverage on our cut. Catch the ball in the high post area. Just no respect for the mid-range jump shooter. Just knock down the jump shot right from 15, 16 feet away. In our seventh clip, pay particular attention to the defender of our high post flash. He's caught between guarding the jump shot in the high post and helping out on a strong post player who can finish off the high-low. This time, let's look at a couple options against pressure and denial defense in the high post. 
We're going to go ahead and start out this play with the entry. The entry pass has already been made. The point guard is already vacated to the corner. We've already brought our, our other guard out as our safety valve. And we're making our break into the high post area. Again, well scouted, simple, pretty simple play, easy to scout. Defense is overplaying and really challenging that high post catch. At that point, we're looking for a loop. We're looking for our forward flasher to recognize that pressure, continue on through in a looping fashion toward the basket, throw the lead pass, and either finish off the loop cut or drop it for the isolated post player on the roll. Clip number eight showcases what we call the loop cut. It's designed to beat ball pressure and denial in our high post area. Because of denial pressure, our high post loops through, catches the ball, and drops to a wide open teammate. More options against pressure defense. We're gonna go ahead and loop again, but this time we're gonna replace and stay with our high-low concept. We've gone ahead and entered the ball to the wing, point guard through to the corner. Safety valve guard up at top. We make our cut into the high post area against pressure. Denial defense in that area. We're gonna go ahead and loop, but in this case, we don't receive the ball from our wing player on our loop. So we continue on through, realizing that now as the loop player, we're turning into the future post isolation. So we loop through. The original isolated post has been, been trained to watch. And if we start to loop, we've got to follow and replace the high post off of that loop. So we're looping through, we're replacing in the high post. Now we're open because of the timing of it. We've got our catch in the high post off of the loop and replace, and now it's high-low. Off the loop and replace. Clip number nine, we loop and replace and stay right with our high-low sequence. More options for your kids versus pressure defense. We've shown both the loop and finish and the loop and replace. We've gone ahead and entered, cleared our point guard to the corner, brought our safety out top. We bring our cut into the high post. Trouble getting the ball into the high post, don't want to turn it over. We just exercise our corner option. Corner option, post ISO through. Still just as difficult to get the backside help available. So we end up actually trying to lob. We set up on the baseline for the bounce pass or depending upon if they play it low with defense right here, we don't mind lobbing it toward the middle of the lane because there's just no backside help in there. Clip number 10 showcases another option we have against denial defense in the high post. Our high post does not loop, so we throw through to the corner and isolate our post player anyway. This is our last option versus pressure. Our safety option. Entered the ball to the wing, gotten our point guard through to the corner. Our safety fires out here hard. We're breaking into the high post area congested don't want to risk it no one's guarding our safety at least they're not denying it to our safety so we're able to go to our safety position we've mentioned many times we'd like our safety position to come as high as possible bring it out on the floor go all the way to half court if you need to so now we get our catch way high on the floor and we're able even if we need a relocation dribble right here 
were able to get the ball into the high post. By this time, the high post player is probably against the body, ceiling, showing a hand, stepping out and catching the ball, maybe a bounce pass into the high post. Get our catch, duck our post in for the isolation, and go high-low out of the safety option. But number 11 showcases what we call the safety variation. The ball will not be entered into the high post flash by the wing player. It will be passed back out to what we call the safety, into the high post, and then finally on the high-low to our post isolation. In clip number 12, our guys do a great job of maintaining composure. The defense is trapping and there's some pretty good pressure. We use the safety option, go into the high post, a nice give and go option off our high low entry. We end up getting a stick back and a short jump shot at the end of the quarter. Play number three is our next perimeter special. It features a screen the screener action on the perimeter. We need our point guard to come down the floor and establish one side of the floor or the other. The shooter then will read the side of the floor that's been established and go to the opposite side of the floor. Point guard in this case is established. The left side of the floor is, is our point of entry. We're going to dribble and establish that one side so that we may set up the ball screen angle for our shooter. Our shooter sets the ball screen. Point guard takes it off the ball screen strong. As that's happening, our backside forward is timing this and is already in the area. And we are screening for the screener at the top of the circle. Our point guard's gonna pick up the ball in a timely fashion. We're gonna banana our cutout here just a little bit as the shooter so that there is an angle to step in to that jump shot at the top of the circle. Screen the screener for the jump shot at the top. Our first clip illustrates the first option of this set. It's screen the screener action for the spot up jump shot. In our second clip, we're also looking for the screen the screener action and a jump shot at the top. In clip three, watch closely as our screener does just an outstanding job of a late half slide to get some contact on the defender that's going to threaten our shot. Let's take a look at some continued action off our play number three. In this case, we're going to get our shooter in a position to be a playmaker off of the catch, looking for penetration based on how the defense plays him. Again, our point guard is going to establish his side. In this case, our point guard establishes the left side of the floor by dribbling the left side, taking it nice and deep before changing directions to head sharply off the screen. Meanwhile, our forward, as this action is taking place, is cleaning up right behind the initial screen for the screen, the screener action at the top. We banana cut just a little bit with our shooter so that when we throw the pass to the shooter, they're stepping in on the shot. Now, in this case, there is no shot. Depending upon how the defense plays us, we come off, it's well scouted, there's no shot opportunity. Our shooter gets on the penetration right off the catch. We get a baseline back cut and finish off the screen, the screener, penetrate and drop to the baseline cutter. In 
clip five. Our shooter comes off the screen and once again puts it on the floor, gets in a gap, is able to create a shot for his teammate. Our next option, we get more penetration and playmaking out of our shooter. Once again, we've established the side of the floor with our point guard so that we may come off the ball screen with an effective angle. Our forward again at that point is timing it up and cleaning up the screen, the screener action. Our shooter makes that a little bit of a banana cut so that we can step in and shoot. We're ready to shoot. Maybe we receive a switch. Maybe they get through it. It's a poor screen. In any case, we have to put the ball on the floor once again. We're into this gap as the shooter. We've already demonstrated the baseline back cut. In this case, we're going to get the screener slipping and rolling toward the basket and creating a nice passing lane for our shooter who is penetrating. Come on, man. That's it. 